The group activity that we did in today's class began as an exercise getting you to think about the idea of equivalence relations and how equivalence relations work on the integers in particular. And it turns out that it ended up giving us exactly the definitions that are going to be the foundation of our understanding of groups in abstract algebra. Let's take a look at the posters that you created for your gallery walks and how each of them fits into the bigger picture. The first question was, if our equivalence relation is defined by x is related to y whenever the difference x minus y belongs to some subset A, the question is, what has to be true about the subset A of integers in order to make this twiddle an equivalence relation? Step one was to figure out what it takes for this equivalence relation to be reflexive. Every equivalence relation needs to be reflexive. So what does that tell us necessarily about A? And the correct assertion that your groups made was that this equivalence relation is reflexive when 0, the integer 0, belongs to the set A. So as long as 0 is an element of this subset, this equivalence relation will be a reflexive relation. Why zero? Because in order to have x be related to itself for all values of x uh, inside of uh, the integers, in order to have everything related to itself, given that the relation is defined by the quality that two things are related when their difference is an element of a, in order for x to be related to itself, that means that the difference between x and x must be an element of a. But the difference between x and x is exactly what we mean by zero. So this group added some additional language in here about additive inverses and so on, but really the main point of their proof was that in order to have x related to itself, we need to have the difference x minus x be an element of a. That's, after all, the definition of this relation. But the difference of x and x is zero. So in order that this be a reflexive relation, zero needs to belong to the subset a. That settles the question about reflexive. What about transitive? What does it take to make this a transitive relation on the set of integers? What has to be true about the set A? Here, your groups correctly deduced that this relation will be transitive exactly when addition of elements of A will always remain within A. In other words, if you give me two elements of A, and I add them together, that their sum needs to also be an element of A. Why is that the case? Well, if you give me an X and a Y that are related together, that means their difference is an element of A. So this quantity, X minus Y, is an element of A. If you give me a Y and a Z, which are related to one another, then their difference must be an element of A also. So this Y minus Z needs to be an element of A. So then the question is, what happens if I add together x minus y plus y minus z? I'm adding together an element of a plus another element of a. And the result, the y's canceling, gives us x minus z. And in order for x to be related to z, in order to be able to conclude that x is related to z, we need this x minus z to be an element of a. So again, reading from the beginning to the end here, in order for this relation to be transitive, we need to be able to say for sure that whenever I have one element of A and I add another element of A together, that their sum is an element of A. That way, when this quantity belongs to A and this quantity belongs to A, we can conclude that that quantity belongs to A and therefore that X is related to Z. That will satisfy our transitive property. Last but not least, every equivalence relation is not only reflexive and transitive, it's also symmetric. And your groups deduced that in order for this relation, in particular, to be a symmetric relation, the set A has to have the property that every element of A also has its additive inverse belonging to A. The argument there is that if we assume X is related to Y, then by definition, X minus Y is an element of A. But we can't conclude that Y minus X is also an element of A, unless we know that the opposite of this element is also an element of A. If we can make this assumption about A, then as soon as X minus Y belongs to A, 
so too will its opposite y minus x. And if y minus x belongs to A, that means we can deduce, by definition, that y is related to x. So any set A for which any element of A also has its additive inverse, its opposite inside of A, will give rise to a symmetric relation in this construction. And the big finish, the whole point of doing this activity today, is that this example of thinking about a, a relation and what's going to make it an equivalence relation helps you to uncover exactly the three properties that are going to characterize our main object of study in abstract algebra. The qualities which we had to assign to the set A of integers here in order to make this an equivalence relation are exactly the three qualities we're going to have to assign to any set of elements along with its operation to make it into a structure we call a group. Those properties we give three names. First of all, the closure property, which is the, uh, the correlate of this transitive property here. Closure means that for any two elements of my set, their sum or their product or whatever their combination using the operation in our group needs to also belong to the set. We can't leave the set when we combine together two elements of that set. So the closure property of groups comes from this motivation here in this example. Meanwhile, the fact that we require zero to belong to this set A gives rise to the notion that groups need to have an identity element. An identity element being something that when we combine it together using the group operation with any other element of that group, it leaves that other element unchanged. So zero is the identity element in the additive group of integers because when we add zero to anything, it doesn't change that thing. And finally, the symmetric property gives rise to something we'll call the inverse property for groups. The inverse property saying that every element in that set has to have some opposite element in that set as well, with that opposite being characterized by the idea that when we combine it together with the original, the result is the identity element. So this example shows why the three properties that we insist upon in defining a group, where they come from in this example, thinking about equivalence relations.